Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. Two youth camping in an abandoned strip mine pit near Moro claim they were startled early Sunday morning when a four-foot-tall ape or monkey suddenly bounded within 15 feet of them. Ron Barton, 19, of Bethalo, and Bo Hester, 19, of Meadowbrook, said they saw the mysterious image through the light of their camp lantern. They described it as an ape of brownish-reddish color, about four to four and a half feet tall. Barton said the creature loped down into the pit toward their tent, stared at them, and then proceeded back up out of the pit, passing within 15 feet or so of their camp. The youth reported the incident to the Madison County Sheriff's Department at around 3 a.m. Sunday. Two deputies, including Sheriff's Department spokesman Pete Beats, came out to the strip mine. Beats said we could not find any evidence of the creature, such as footprints or fur, but we have no reason to disbelieve the youths either. Bates said the department also checked on whether a pet Asian rock monkey owned by a nearby resident might have escaped. The owner of that monkey assured them that it had not gotten out. The department did not plan any further investigation of the reported ape or monkey. We don't normally track down monster stories, but if it had been an Asian rock monkey, it could be a danger to the children. So we checked it out for safety reasons, Bates said. Barton and Hester claimed the ape they saw was much larger than the pet Asian rock monkey. They also said the tracks would not have shown up because of the rock and gravel in the strip mine. Barton said that if he could get a permit to use a high-powered rifle, he'd like to go back and try to track down the creature, which he said he didn't think could be taken alive. Dave Harper, biologist with the Illinois Department of Conservation Office in Alton, said he has not heard any report of stray monkeys or apes in the area since a squirrel hunter shot a small rhesus monkey near Pierre Marquette State Park several years ago. He said, though, that sometimes people owning pet monkeys will not report it when they escape. On to the next one. The Rockford Morning Star. It speaks softly, carries a big foot. 17-inch tracks found. It's Bigfoot, the huge, legendary, man-like creature whose existence never has been documented visiting the Lowell Park area near here. That's the question being asked by some Dixon area residents after 17-inch long footprints were discovered Monday at the edge of Rock River, a short distance north of the heavily timbered 200-acre park two miles north of Dixon. The two clearly defined footprints were a flattish feet with five toes of nearly equal length. One print was of the right foot, the other a left foot print, and the stride between the two prints was 40 inches. There also were several heel prints. The prints measured eight and three quarter inches wide at the ball of the foot. An unidentified fisherman who was in the park early in the morning said he found park benches were thrown around and big footprints were all around them. By afternoon, however, the only big tracks that could be found were upstream from the park in a deserted area. The prints ended at the riverbank. Lou Gerds, who has a cottage nearby, at first said, maybe I did it. I have the biggest feet around here. But when Gerds' feet were measured, they turned out to be only 11 inches long, six inches too short of the Bigfoot tracks. Dixon police officer Howard Kendall, who has been on duty in Lowell Park since April, said he had not seen any sign of any creature resembling a Bigfoot. 
On to the next one. The Bloomington Pentagraph. Spring resurrects the Kickapoo Monster. Dale Mitchell, a 23-year-old mechanic from Downs, said he saw and was pursued by something about seven feet tall and covered with fur late Monday night, about two miles north of Downs. Mitchell says that as he was driving to his home in Downs from his job in Wapella, when the headlights of his pickup truck shone on what he said looked like a Bigfoot monster. Oh, come on, I saw it, Dale Mitchell says. Mitchell said he saw the thing near a bend in Kickapoo Creek when he saw it. He stopped his truck on a rural road to look at the thing. When he stopped, the thing started rushing towards him. Mitchell took off. He didn't get a very good look at the thing, but said it had a kind of human face and hands. Mitchell said he nervously drove home, and as many people who have seen monsters do, called the Daily Pentagraph. There were several reports of a Bigfoot monster in Tazewell County near Coal Hollow Road. A lot of people got pretty riled up over those monster sightings. About 75 men in Tazewell County formed a posse, equipped with guns and flashlights to find the monster. The monster wasn't found, and the posse broke up shortly after one of the searchers, an East Peoria man, accidentally shot himself in the leg. Some members of the posse figured the monster went back home in outer space. The United Press International was moving quite a few stories about monster sightings near the small town of Enfield in southern Illinois. Henry McDaniel, a disabled war veteran from Enfield, told UPI that he heard something scratching on the rear door of his house in the spring. He said he went to the door and saw a gray, hairy, three-legged monster standing like a human being with pink reflecting eyes bulging from a huge head. I wasn't scared, McDaniels told UPI. He went back into his house and got a gun. Then he shot it four times. He said the monster hissed, leapt 75 feet in three jumps, and then disappeared. The monster story got national attention when a man in Elyria, Ohio, read it. He recognized the description. It was his pet kangaroo that had escaped. Its tail looked kind of like a third leg. The most reports of a monster in any one place in the area came from Farmer City in July. Within a week, about 30 people reported seeing a man-like thing covered with grayish-white fur near a rural campsite. Four young men camping at the site said they thought and managed to get a set of car lights on it before it ran away. Soon after the thing ran away, they ran away. One of the young men had his broken foot set in a cast. He ran off without his crutches. They reported the sighting to police. A couple of nights late, about a dozen people said they saw a thing with glowing eyes in the dark. A few nights after that, three people swore to police they saw the furry creature again. And a couple of nights after that, about ten people told police they saw the thing standing by a dead tree about a hundred feet away from their campsite. Farmer City Police Officer Robert Hayslip, after getting all the reports, went to the campsite one morning at about two o'clock. Hayslip said he heard something running through all the tall grass, but didn't see anything. When Hayslip left, there was a tent standing at the campsite at the camping area. Four hours later, the tent was found ripped to shreds, and it hasn't been heard from in the Farmer City area since. A couple of weeks after the Farmer City sightings, several youth said they saw a similar creature on the Kickapoo near Hayworth. I really saw it, Mitchell said Tuesday. I got pretty shook up. On to the next one. In Madison County in Illinois, my wife actually saw a Bigfoot one evening getting close to dark. We were sitting in the car talking while we were dating, and she saw one standing behind the car. We were talking, and she all of a sudden shut up, turned white as a ghost, and turned back around. 
I asked her what was wrong, and she said, I saw one standing behind the car. As soon as she looked at it, it started moving back away. By the time we both looked back around, it was gone. I've seen total evidence. My mother has seen them, and my wife has seen them. It was 7 p.m., warm and clear in the woods and lakes near the Mississippi River. On to the next one. A strange lizard-like animal was seen in the town of New Hamburg, famous for its Shakespeare Festival. In the early 1960s, this reptile was seen by over 20 of the townspeople, including the chief of police. The reptile was described as greenish-brown in color, with a scaled tail and about 50 pounds, four-legged, but three-toed. Needless to say, there are no 50-pound lizards indigenous to Canada, and scientists agree that lizards of that size are not three-toed. As seems to be the case with so many Canadian cryptids, this creature was said to live on or in the River Ninth, which runs through the town. Most people interested in cryptozoology have heard the tales of giant snakes in places like the Amazonian jungles. There are even researchers who theorize that the monster snakes are relic examples of the Titan boa that was once native to the area. This idea seems entirely possible. What is more incredible is the idea that there are giant snake reports from the wilds of Canada. Canada is not a snake-laden place, and Manitoba has only five recognized species, none of them large. One First Nations elder relates this story from memory. As a young man, Michael, the elder, had gone duck hunting on foot with a friend. They skirted the edge of a lake, hearing an unusual call as they went along. The sound was repeated now and then and seemed to keep pace with them, but neither of the men acknowledged any discomfort on its account, even though it was an unfamiliar, eerie sound. When they reached a swampy area, they decided to retrace their steps and immediately came upon a huge serpent, its mouth wide open, emitting a fearsome sound that they heard before. Whether or not they fired a shot at it before they fled, they don't recall. But the gentleman said that they, they would have easily outrun an ATV on that occasion. A native woman driving a minivan tried to go around a log in the road and realized that it was a huge snake. The sighting of an enormous snake made a First Nations man give up on the lake where he was working selling his boat and canoe, and moving to other hunting grounds. A man from St. Martin was watching ducks on the lake when an enormous snake came up from the water and gulped down two of the aquatic fowl. On that same lake in the 1950s, a boat actually ran into the head of a giant snake in the water. The 20-foot boat was bumped out of the way. The snake continued on its way. Not only do these serpents appear in report after report, but there seems to be more than one species of giant snake slithering through the Canadian underbrush. A teen on his bike, Richard, also saw a large serpent, but it may have been a different species according to the description of it. The dark snake was also in the watery ditch, and its head was raised about a foot out of the water. It was bigger than a human head, and not diamond-shaped like the garter, but more rounded and flat-topped like a hamburger bun, with the eyes protruding from the surface. Two brothers from the same community were paddling their canoes on nearby Pinimuda Lake, which flows into Lake St. Martin. They spotted a stovepipe-sized snake swimming about 100 feet away. Feeling too vulnerable in the open water, they paddled furiously towards the reeds for protection, deeming their 22 rifle virtually useless. 
against a twenty-foot-long serpent. Its shape and green and black coloring reminded them of an oversized garter snake. One brother stated that although most of its body was visible in the calm water, the head remained fully above the water, exposing an orange throat. He estimated the width of the head and body to be eight inches. In Swan Lake, north of the town of Swan River, in west-central Manitoba, snakes with horns are a familiar story. Lester Brass tells of his experience out on the lake one spring before goslings were big enough to fly. As he was driving around looking to catch them, a large serpent appeared near the boat. Its head was just under a foot in diameter, and the body was longer than its 22-foot yawl. But what was unique about it were the seven- or eight-inch horns sticking out from the top of the head, making it look like a jumper buck. It swam very quickly in a lateral fashion. He mentioned that when he was a boy, his brother and grandfather had reported seeing the same thing stick its head out of the river near home. Here's the testimony of two firefighters who encountered one of these mysterious reptiles. This event took place near the south shore of Cedar Lake in central Manitoba, where the Chimawawan First Nation is today. Two firefighters walked along this wide, bare strip of ground, one carrying a shovel and the other an axe. They came upon a huge snake that not only spanned the whole clearing, but also had its head and tail out of sight in the grass. Behind the two ridges of dirt and debris, they stood amazed and pondered what to do. The man with the axe suggested he chop it in two, but the other who related the story advised against it. So they stood and gazed until finally the serpent slowly moved out of their way, leaving them with the invaluable memory of what they had seen. Had it moved quickly across their vision, they would not have been able to memorize the distinctive colors and patterns on the creature. First Nation elders are adamant in telling people not to approach these giant snakes and not to discuss them. The attitude amongst Native people seemed to be that these reptiles were a mystery, in the old meaning of a sacred thing that required initiation to begin to understand it, and they should remain such. Nevertheless, people who see incredible things seem to have a compulsion to share their story when they have the sympathetic ear of someone who will not make fun of them. The witnesses don't all seem to be describing the same creature. While many of the reports were of titanic dark-colored snakes, well over 20 feet long, people reported different shapes of head and even different colors. Some of the witnesses even likened the snake they saw to a giant garter snake and the ones the firefighter described a malted skin pattern reminiscent of a rattlesnake. It would be amazing enough if a creature like the Titan Boa made its home in Canada. But the witnesses seem to be describing several different species of giant snake. Where in the world are these creatures coming from, and how are they surviving the harsh winters of Canada? Other commonality that pops up repeatedly in the witness testimony is the proximity to water. Another enormous species of snakes, the anaconda, uses the water to buoy its enormous body and make it easier to move. Given the Canadian giant snakes are reported to be 20 feet or more, it makes sense they would adopt a similar stratagem. Canada is rife with lake monsters. Given the large number of giant snake encounters documented, it makes you wonder how many of these lake monsters are actually giant snakes. I hope you enjoyed those encounters, and if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!